Hey guys, welcome back. So in this video, I want to talk about net worths. Now, I used to think of net worths meaning that if someone had a net worth of $50 million, that meant that they had $50 million in their bank account. And that is not true. <laughs> it could be true, but in most cases, it's not. When someone has a high net worth, it usually means that they own something that's really valuable and not that that amount of money is necessarily in their bank account. In most cases, someone would have to sell that item before they can actually have that money, if that makes sense. So that being said, let's like break down how you can determine your net worth. And then later in the video, I'm going to tell you what my net worth is. So your net worth is your assets minus your liability. So let's explain what those things are. What is an asset? An asset is pretty much anything that you own. So it can be property like a land or a home, a building or something like that. Um, it can be retirement accounts. Um, it can be like cash money, like large amounts of money, um, cars. Some people say that cars aren't an asset. Um, but I think that they are, they're just a depreciating asset. So the longer you have it, the less it's probably gonna be worth unless it's like a collector's item or something like that. But like an average car, like, yeah, it just, it's gonna depreciate a lot every year. It's gonna depreciate the most in those like beginning years, um, but still every year it's gonna be worth less and less and less. Um, but it's still an asset because you can sell it for money. So I still consider it an asset. If you wanted to, you could be like nitpicky and include like even small things that you own, like um, like jewelry. Um, like I'm looking at my computer right now. Like I own that. I could sell it for money. Um, my TV, my camera equipment, all of that. Those are like smaller things that are technically assets, but most people don't include things like that. Most people just include big items um, that are worth a lot. So like cars, property, um, accounts that have lar large amounts of money. So like I said, retirement accounts. Also, if you have things um, in like a savings account, you can include that. But you wouldn't want to include like your checking account, like anything that changes like month to month like a checking account would, money coming in and out frequently, like you wouldn't wanna include that um, because with most people's checking account, they kinda like, <laughs> it normally stays around the same. Like they'll get their check, it goes down because you spend the money, then you get your check again, then it goes down and just like a cycle kind of. So you don't wanna include things like that. But if you have like an emergency savings, um, like a large emergency savings, that is money that you're not going to touch it's just sitting there in case something happens, you can include that too. And then also make sure you include any retirement accounts or brokerage accounts or anything like that. So all of those are assets, right? So those are things that you own. So now let's talk about liabilities. Liabilities are things that you owe. They're things that you are still paying on. So that's things like any form of debt, like a loan. So Student loans, that's a liability. Um, like medical bills, liability, um, even a mortgage. So it's interesting because a home can be an asset and a liability. Um, it's an asset because you do own it, but it's a liability because most people have a mortgage on a home, meaning you have to pay that money back, right? So imagine like, let's say you bought a house for $200,000. Um, and a year later, maybe it's appreciated at 300,000 and now you want to sell it. If you were to sell that, you would do 300,000 minus 200,000 and you walk away with 100,000. You couldn't walk away with the full 300 because you still owed 200,000 on it. So it's both a asset, but it's also a liability. So homes are like that. Cars are like that. Um, a car is an asset, again, if you own it, especially if you own it outright, you're not paying on it anymore. But if you are paying on it, then it's also a liability because you're still paying that back. Um, and some people can have negative uh, equity in a car, meaning 
um, they're paying more than it's worth. That's called being underwater on a, on a car payment. Um, so that can happen. So it's kind of like, it's kind of tricky because they can be both things at the same time, but just wanted to mention that. Other examples of liabilities also include unpaid taxes. That is also a liability. So those are the different examples of assets and liabilities. And again, in order to calculate your net worth, you would do your assets minus liabilities. And then whatever that number is, that's your net worth. It can be, you want it to be positive, um, but it can also be a negative number. Spoiler alert, mine is a negative number. So it's okay. We have plans for it to one day be positive, but yeah, my, mine's negative. So if yours is negative too, you are not alone. So you can go ahead, you can pause the video maybe um, and figure out your net worth. If you feel comfortable, you can comment it down below, but now let's go into my net worth. So what are my assets? I came up with three different things that are my assets. Number one is my car. So I did it, or I went on Kelly Blue Book and I found the value of my car. Um, it's a 2016 Honda HRV. It's got more than 90,000 miles on it. And Kelly Blue Book gave me like a range. So I did it in the middle and they told me it's worth around $11,500 average. So that's what I'm putting for that. Um, next are my retirement accounts. So right now I have $14,765.93 in my retirement accounts. Um, a little detail about that. Um, that is not fully vested. Um, so pause in case you don't know what fully vested means. So when you work at a company that has retirement accounts or a 401k as a benefit, um, you can be fully vested in that like 100% day one that you started that company or you're not fully vested and it's gonna, you have to work at that company for a matter of years before you are fully vested. So if you were 100% vested, you could work there for three months and whatever money was in that 401k account, you could keep all of it. If you're not fully vested, let's say like my company, I have to be there for three years before it's fully vested. So if I worked there for one year, whatever money is in the account, I would only get to keep like a third of that. If I'm there for two years, I can keep two thirds of it. But if I decide to quit on like exactly my three year mark, then I'd be able to keep all of that money. So that's what I mean by fully vested or not fully vested. And I am not fully vested. So if I were to quit today, I would not keep that full amount of money. It would actually be a much smaller amount. Um, but yeah. So that's what I have as far as my retirement accounts. And then I also have savings. So I have um, an emergency savings of $6,024.65 in an emergency savings account. I don't touch that money. It's just there if something major happens in life, like I were to lose my job or something. So that's what that money's for. So when I add up the car, the retirement accounts, and my savings, I get a total of $32,290.58. Now, if you've seen my other videos, you know that I have sinking funds and I'm also saving for a house. I chose to not include that in my assets because that money fluctuates. Once I buy the house relatively quickly, hopefully, that money's gonna be gone, so I shouldn't include that in the assets. Um, also, with the sinking funds, those are like designed to be used within like a short period of time, like a year. So any like short-term money, I wouldn't put that in assets. So that's why I didn't do that in mine. Um, but yeah, so that's where I'm at with my assets. So now let's talk about my liabilities. It's not that much to talk about. For me, it's just my student loans. Gotta love the student loans. Um, for me, they're worth 
They were worth. <laughs> they were totaled at $34,387.29. That's my student loans for grad school. So, as I was saying earlier, the way I'm going to figure out my net worth is to do my assets minus my liability. So, for me, when I do that, that's $32,290.58. Minus $34,387.29 for a grand total of negative $2,096.71. So as I was saying earlier, I have a negative net worth, um, which I'm actually surprised at that number because I thought it would be a lot less than that or a lot more a lot more negative if that's how you say that I thought I thought it would be <laughs> I thought it would be a higher negative number um, but that's because I was only thinking about my car and I wasn't thinking about the retirement accounts or the savings so I thought that I would be like more than ten thousand dollars like in the negative but I'm only negative two thousand so if theoretically, if I wanted to like just put $2,000 towards my student loans, I could have a at least like a zero net worth <laughs> or, uh, you know, I'm not that far away from it being a positive net worth, which is very surprising to me. It's a good surprise, but it it surprised me once I actually did this. So I encourage other people to do that. Um, just so that you know, like a more realistic picture of your financial health, if you want to call it that, um, you may be like me and be surprised that you're actually in better shape, better shape than you, uh, thought. Or if it's the opposite and you're in worse shape than you thought, well, this is the moment you needed to see exactly where you're at. And then you would come up with a plan so that it can get better. And with me um, being only negative $2,000 as a net worth, if I'm able to get this house um, this year, I'll like immediately have a positive net worth. Um, so that's, that's pretty exciting. I could start, I would have started 2021 in a negative net worth and it actually was a lot higher because I had credit card debt at the beginning of 2021 and I could end 2021 with a positive net worth so once i if i'm able to to buy the house this year so that's pretty exciting so i encourage everyone to do this process and figure out what your net worth actually is it could surprise you the same way it did me i do plan on making more of these videos i don't see like i don't think you need to track your net worth like every month because I'm not at a point where it would change uh, that much every month, but maybe every year, maybe every six months, who knows, I'll figure something out. But I do want to start tracking this more regularly. Um, but thank you for watching the video. Hope you liked it. Subscribe to the channel, write some comments down below, and I'll see you next time.